So time now to take you through the morning papers with Afra Hagen and Thomas Copeland. Uh, so a very good morning to, to both of you. Good to see you both. Um, so let's kick off, shall we, uh, with the Daily Mail. Afra, you had uh, spotted this front page and wanted to talk about it. And there are royals everywhere you look on this front page. I don't think there's any other story that's covered. So what's their main splash there? Absolutely, Royals all over the front page of the Daily Mail here. And this is ahead of William's 40th birthday on Tuesday. Um, the Daily Mail's Rebecca English has spoken to a wide range of his friends and people close to him uh, to find out how he feels about turning 40 and, of course, his relationship with Prince Harry. So in this piece, Rebecca English has spoken to uh, quite a few people who discuss his relationship with Prince Harry. Uh, and the general lines are that Prince William feels that Prince Harry has been sucked into an alien world that he doesn't understand, that he swings between grief and anger at the state of their relationship now, him. which we know that uh, has been fractured uh, since uh, Prince Harry and Meghan took that decision to step back from royal life and move to America. Uh, but also other people saying that he's wildly protective of his brother and that he doesn't like it when people uh, criticise him or speak out against him, I guess as any brother would. And I guess ahead of Prince William's 40th birthday, is finding out where his head is at, how he feels about potentially being a future monarch. But there is so much scrutiny over his relationship with Prince Harry. And it's quite interesting to read this piece and see all the wide-ranging uh, opinions from different people that claim to know him on how he feels about Prince Harry, the move that Prince Harry made to America, and of course, his wife, Meghan Markle. Thomas, what do you make of this? I mean, there are so many big stories around at the moment, aren't there? And, and, and yet, no doubt, stories like this will sell newspapers. People are fascinated uh, by this relationship uh, at the, the heart of the royal family. What, what do you make of the fact that it's making a front page here? Well, I suppose for a lot of people, um, you know, there's an element of escape. It is a minute. This is a family, and particularly William and Harry, that the, the public almost feel as if they've grown up with. They've watched them throughout their lives, and so in many ways, it's a relationship in which they, you know, they've seen a progression throughout their own lives. So it's a relationship in which many people probably feel significantly invested in, in a very real sense. That's why it sells newspapers. People want to know about this family, want to know about this relationship. By and large, they want the best for that relationship and for the future of the monarchy as well as what the polling shows. So it's no surprise that it sells newspapers. I don't think it's a particularly negative thing either. I mean, in just a second, that we're going to be talking, I think, about, you know, the likes of inflation and tax uh, tax rises and all this kind of stuff. So that's a very big part of people's lives as well. So, you know, uh, people feel invested in the relationship that they see at the, at the heart of the royal family and they want the best for it. That's why it sells newspapers. Yeah, interesting. And in fact, you mentioned that we were going to talk about inflation. Let's do that now, Thomas, because the front page of The Times, uh, their story is big wage increases, too risky, bosses told. And this is the uh, chief secretary to the Treasury warning against big wage hikes because he says that even though people are, are feeling the squeeze uh, that those big wage hikes could prove inflationary and we've already got a big problem there. It's cold comfort to a lot of people, particularly in the public sector, are seeing their expenses, their expenditure rise as well, their pay is staying static. So essentially, this is Simon Clark, who's the, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, saying that if, if employers increase the wages or the pay of their employees, that's going to have a pretty negative a reaction effect in terms of inflation. Uh, at the moment, the Bank of England that's published in this article is saying that there's likely to be up to 11% inflation by the time we get to October. They've increased their interest rates to 1.25% to try to dampen down that economic activity. So this is a common, in some, in some ways, a global problem, but Britain is leading the pack, certainly in terms of the G7, it's got the highest rates of inflation in there. So basically the way that this works is that if you increase people's wages, what happens is that then there's more money to spend and then that increases inflation called demand pull inflation. But I mean, in many ways, the public would be well justified in looking at their own budgets and saying, well, how on earth is that fair that I'm trying to have, I'm having to spend a lot more being on food, energy bills, any number of expenses, and at the same time, my pay isn't increasing. Where this moves into the political world, I suppose, is that, you know, the Tories for a long time have maintained this sense of, and the polling backs this up, fiscal credibility, economic credibility, and they've always had that lead over Labour really since since the crash, sort of 2008-2009. If they start to lose that, either yeah. by doing nothing or by doing something unhelpful, this article talks about tax cuts potentially being unhelpful, that's really damaging because it means that the Tories can no longer fall back on that fiscal credibility argument. That's what happened to the Republicans in the USA, yeah. and actually since they've lost some of that credibility,
difficulty. They're trying, they've had to cl- cling on to some of these culture war issues, and that's not a place that we want to go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a, a big issue, uh, isn't it, facing, well, the politicians making their decisions, but obviously people living their everyday lives. And, and one sign of that on the front of the Guardian, Afra, schools, pools and libraries face massive cuts, and this is partly because of inflation, isn't it? Yes, um, and as well as the cost of living crisis, you know, councils are facing the worst crunch in terms of inflation pressures on council budgets that they've seen for decades, which means that school building projects, swimming pools and libraries have been earmarked for emergency con- uh, emergency funding cuts. Uh, and town halls have been hit by an unexpected £1.7 billion pound hole in their budget. And that's due to a few things. Uh, it's the cost of things like building materials going up so much uh, in the past few months. They've got a bigger wage bill as well. And of course, inflation, which means that they simply won't be able to make good on projects like swimming pools, like libraries, you know, all these local services that people use, you know, quite a lot. And it's not just about the cost of living crisis now hitting us at the pumps where we put petrol in our cars or hitting us at the supermarket when we're doing our weekly shop. It's now affecting at our local councils, which is going to affect our local services. And at a time when the government has been talking about levelling up, about levelling up our services up and down the country, this is going to come as a huge blow to that plan. Because if councils simply cannot afford to provide all these public services, then they're not going to get better across the country. And that is absolutely the opposite of this levelling up plan. Yeah. Yes, this is another case of inflation and the cost of living crisis hitting us across the board. So many challenges for people in so many areas aren't there and we are out of time for now but i am going to see you again in an hour's time but afro and thomas for the moment thanks both very much indeed do stay with us coming up next on sky news breakfast migrants crossing the channel in small boats could now be electronically tagged once they arrive in the uk under new home office plans we'll have more details at the top of the hour